Today, we've got a really fun demo in Bevy. Here, I've got a game running or a Bevy app running that is loading in an LDTK built level and attaching some components to the flag here and animating it, as you can see. And this is a level I could have a character in it. I just don't at the moment. But the really fun part is I can take this level that I designed over here, saved to an LDTK file, and I can drag it over and drop it right onto the Bevy app, which then loads it and instantiates the level for me. And we can do this with any LDTK file currently. These both happen to be the same size, so that's why that's working like it is. So let's take this custom level here. I have the level editor open, and I'm gonna drag in the original level here. I'm gonna make some changes, maybe place a flower here. There's a tile map. Maybe I wanna place another flag here. So I'll place one up here, save that out. You can see that it's saved to my custom level and just drag my level back on. And you'll see that this flag actually isn't animated while this one is. And that's because I've added it just as a tile, but I can also go up here and add it as an entity. Just add it right up here into the same position. I'll save this out, drag and drop it back on. And now we have an entity the same as the other flag. So this has very cool implications. This uses the built-in drag and drop behavior of Bevy plus a crate called Bevy ECS LDTK. Bevy ECS LDTK is entirely responsible for all of the fancy LDTK integration. So this doesn't contain any custom LDTK file parsing or anything like that. And LDTK is a completely separate level editor, as you can see here, that produces a JSON output. So this has all of the information for all of the levels that we just saw. This is the default one that we spawn the app with. And then if I bring this over, we can see that it's basically the same thing. So to me, this has some pretty cool implications and it uses, again, the built-in drag and drop functionality inside of Bevy, which we'll cover in a second here. In this case, I am using the main branch of Bevy ECS LDDK and its underlying crate, Bevy ECS tile map, because that's what I wanted to do. And then Bevy 0.13.2. We've got one file here, main.rs. Our levels sheet is our texture atlas, which gets loaded in with these LDTK levels. And as we went over before, the LDTK is actually just JSON. So the LDTK plugin comes from Bevy ECS LDTK and handles the parsing of all of these LDTK files. It also is what enables us to have this register LDTK entity function on our app builder, which will look for the end flag entity. If we go back to the entities, we can see that this is labeled end flag. If we look into the entity identifier, this is called end flag in the same way that this string is. And then we have a component called end flag. That component is defined down here, which we'll talk about in a second when we talk about the animation. But let's focus on the drag and drop. We've got a setup function, and then we've got two systems that run whenever we hit the update phase of our frame. One is handling the file drag and drop, and the other is handling the animation of this flag. We are also automatically selecting level zero because LDTK can actually instantiate whole worlds and not just singular levels. So our setup spawns a camera at an arbitrary height and width. I just hard coded the you know, width and height taken from this LDTK setup that I have. This would be, you know, read from the LDTK file if you wanted to. So we're just positioning the camera so that we can see the level. And then we spawn in an LDTK world bundle. We load in our default LDTK level using the asset server, and we label it with a current world component, which has no data, it's just a, it's just a label. So this spawns our initial world, at which point we have the ability to then drag and drop a level onto our app this queries for texture atlases and animate flag components. The animate flag component is a custom component that I built. Basically, if you look at the texture atlas, you see the flag here. I'm only placing the first flag into my LDTK scene and to animate it, I actually wanna flip back and forth between these two sprites. So that's what this is doing. It's setting a timer. It's saying, hey, there's two frames from where we start the flag animation and it's flipping back and forth between those two. This sprite sheet bundle and this LDTK entity are part of the LDGK integration. All this says is basically, we're gonna use that texture atlas that we have, that we're building our world out of as the source of the texture that we're going to place in this component. And we're gonna have access to that texture atlas. And then animate flag, again, is the timer on which this flag uh, opens and closes. So since this isn't really an animation tutorial, all I'm gonna say is we tick the timer, we flip the flag between the two frames, and then we set the atlas index. So that happens automatically whenever, whenever any level loads. So if we have an animate flag component, if we use this entity inside of our level editor and we placed it inside of the level that we dragged and dropped on, then we will have an animated flag. Our file drag and drop system is the really interesting part here. Drag and drop is built into Bevy as an event. So we can use an event reader on the file drag and drop event to then read any drag and drop events that are happening. 
These events include dropped file. So if we drop it onto the app, if we're hovering over our app with the file, or if something canceled the action. In this case, I don't do anything on hovered or canceled. So I've left those there in case you wanna play with them. Um, but otherwise we're not using them. The dropped file event comes with the window the file was dropped onto in case you have a multi-window app, as well as the path buff or the file location that you are dropping onto it. We've also got this query current world. Remember that current world tag that I placed on the original LDTK bundle? We use that to make sure that we despawn any old worlds before we instantiate the new one. Then we take that path and we check the extension to see if it's LDTK. If it is LDTK, we can continue with our code. If not, then we continue this loop and check for the next event. If it is LDTK, then we're gonna do exactly the same thing we did in our startup system, except we're going to use the path that the user dropped onto our app. We're gonna spawn in the LDTK world using that path, and we're gonna label it with current world. This is all we need to do to spawn in our new level. So given the LDTK support in Bevy ECS LDTK and the event support for drag and drop, a running productionized Bevy app given to say your friend and some instruction about how to build levels allows them to go into something like LDTK, build their own level, and then drag and drop that onto your app, at which point they could theoretically play their level. The flag part is in here specifically because that allows us to do things like animate different elements, or if we had an entity in our level editor defined in our entities page here, I don't know what to call this, the settings, <laughs> in the same way we have this flag, we could also attach any controls that we wanted to. So if we wanted this flower to animate, or if we wanted to have a player spawn right here, we could do that in LDTK, as long as those systems are built inside of Bevy. And this allows people to build arbitrary level designs for the pre-existing functionality that you've built into your game. And that's it for today. I'm gonna put this up on GitHub, so check the description if you've watched this long and you want access to the code. And if it's Saturday morning, I might be streaming live some Bevy game development, so go check that out, and I'll catch you in the next one.